What's going on, y'all? It's your man, Supreme, and welcome back to another episode of The Real Rap Show. And this is episode 55 of The Real Rap Show, The Murder of Anna Matias. Now, before we get this episode started, I would like to say thank you to everyone who has been tuning in to The Real Rap Show since day one. Everyone in the comments and also everyone that gives me great feedback about the show. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can stay notified whenever I drop a new episode of The Real Rap Show. And follow The Real Rap Show on Instagram at It's The Real Rap Show. Now let's get this shit started. In the early 1990s, New York City was a danger zone, especially in the boroughs. And the Bronx was one of them. Drugs, shootings, robberies, rapes, murders, and suicides were rampant in the Bronx in the 1990s. Anna Matias was the daughter of Jocelyn and Miguel Matias. They also had a son. Growing up, Anna had a good childhood, even though Miguel and Jocelyn argued a lot. Miguel took really good care of Anna and her brother. They had an apartment in the Bronx. Until one night, Miguel and Jocelyn got into a big argument and Miguel went into the kitchen and grabbed a 12-inch steak knife and held Jocelyn hostage in their bedroom for hours, threatening to kill her. She called the cops, but Miguel was in charge with a crime. Jocelyn, Anna, and her brother then moved to Allentown, Pennsylvania. Now, every weekend, Jocelyn would drive the kids down to the Bronx to visit Miguel. He was still living in the Bronx in the building that he was living in. He also was the superintendent to that building. Anna and her brother didn't like Allentown, Pennsylvania. They anticipated coming to the Bronx every weekend because that's where all their friends were. Now, Anna loved it because in the building that her dad lived and worked in, there was a computer in his superintendent office. And every weekend, Anna would be on that computer for hours talking to friends online. In Pennsylvania, they didn't have a computer. Months later, Jocelyn moved on and began a new relationship. And whenever she would bring the kids down to the Bronx to see Miguel, he always wanted to argue about why she left him. Soon after, Jocelyn, Miguel, and the kids planned to take a family drive to see a family member that lived out of state. Now, on the day of the trip, while Miguel, Jocelyn, Anna, and her brother was all inside the car about to leave, this nigga Miguel starts arguing with Jocelyn about her new man. And the nigga got so mad, he got out the car and grabbed a jug of gasoline out the trunk. He pours the gasoline all over the car, gets back inside the car, and pulled out a lighter and threatened to blow up the car with everybody inside. Now, Anna and her brother were scared to death. Anna's little brother was so scared that he told Anna, I love you, goodbye. And when Miguel heard the little boy say that, he snapped out of it and apologized. Now, I want to step away from the story for a minute. Hit the like button because I don't know what type of chick Jocelyn was, but after you just, matter of fact, I already know that you crazy from before. And on the day of this family trip, nigga, you start questioning me about the nigga I fuck with in front of the kids, the kids right in the back seat. You start an argument with me in the car, nigga. And then you got the audacity to get out the car and do some crazy man shit and you pouring gasoline on the car. Then you want to get back in the car and pull out a lighter and threaten me and my kids. Then you're going to bluff and apologize like I'm some punk ass bitch on some real shit. Hit the like button. Nigga, is we still going to drive and go see this person or is we not? If we going, let's go. If we not going, me and the kids is out. But the next time when I would have got back to my crib, the next time that we would have saw Miguel, I would have told my whole family about it. We would have set his ass on fire. Ladies, tear the comment section the fuck up. Let me know what y'all would have did if y'all baby father would have did this to y'all and the kids in the car. Now, after a nigga do some shit like that, you supposed to cut off all ties. You go into the courts, nigga supervised, 
visitation rights. Somebody got to be there with you when I bring the kids to you. Now, the crazy part is this. Jocelyn did not do none of that. She was so scared of this nigga Miguel that she continued to bring the kids down to the Bronx to see his crazy ass every weekend. At this time, Anna was 14 years old. On the weekend of February 15th, 2008, Anna was at Miguel's house. It was a regular Friday night. Miguel, his sister, and Anna played games online while they all talked on the telephone. Miguel and Anna was at his house and his sister was at her house. The next day, Anna was in Miguel's office again on that computer, talking to a boy online, sending naked photos back and forth, chatting about sex. Now, while Anna's on the computer, Miguel sneaks into the office and catches her online talking to someone. I guess she tried to hide what she was doing on the computer, but it was his computer. So he pulled up the conversation and saw the pictures and the chat that she was having with this boy online. Miguel got so fucking mad that he snatched Anna up and started beating her. Now, in this superintendent's office, it's all kind of tools, wires, and plugs and shit down there. He grabbed an extension cord and wrapped it around Anna's neck and choked her and killed her down there. Now, also in this superintendent's office, it was like a boiler or some sort of incinerator. But at the bottom of it, it was fire down there burning. He took Anna's body and dumped it down in the incinerator or the boiler or whatever it was and went back upstairs to his apartment like nothing happened. Now, later on that day, Miguel ended up telling his sister, the one that they was online playing games with, he ended up telling her what he did to Anna. Now, she came to the house, and he also called his cousin and told his cousin what he did. His cousin came to the house, they went downstairs in the superintendent's office, looked in the boiler, and saw Anna's burning body still in there. They then called the police. The police came. They went down there and looked in the boiler and saw that Anna's body was in there burning. Miguel Matias was arrested and charged with murder. Now, when the police was interviewing Miguel at the precinct, he told them that he did have mental problems and that he wanted to get 30 to 50 years for what he did to Anna. When Miguel got to Rikers Island, he was on suicide watch after he tried to commit suicide two times and he also tried to plead insanity. Now listen to this shit. The medical examiner said that at the time of her death, Anna was 12 weeks pregnant. DNA proved that the father of Anna's unborn child was her father, Miguel Matias. He was then hit with several sexual assault charges and other charges now after this nigga tries to plead insanity a judge still sentenced him to 25 years to life in jail but he would have got 50 years if he would have tried to take it to trial now this nigga miguel matias ends up telling police the reason he started sexually assaulting his own daughter he said that the reason he started doing that to her was to get back at Jocelyn for leaving him. Miguel Matias died in prison in 2011. Now, light the comment section up because my thing is this. Why would you be mad at her for talking to a boy online about sex and sending naked pictures and all of that when you already know she ain't no virgin because, my nigga, you was already, even though... This is your kid, and it sounds crazy saying this. It sounded crazy hearing it, but why would you be mad when you was already fucking her? You know, for what you did to your own kid on some real shit, I wanted you personally to feel what prison is really like the long way, if y'all get my drift. But unfortunately, you died, and I'm pretty sure it's a lot of people that is glad that you died and I'm pretty sure that wherever you are now you know what it feels like to be in a boiler or an incinerator with its fire burning because my nigga 
that's where you're going to be for the rest of motherfucking eternity. And you know what? To be real about it, I really hope that every fucking year on the anniversary of Anna's death, that her entire family comes to the cemetery where your bum ass is buried at and everybody individually will walk up and take a shit, a piss, and vomit on your grave, nigga. Rest in peace to Anna Matias. Thank y'all for watching. It's your man Supreme, and you were just tuned in to another episode of The Real Rap Show. And this was episode 55 of The Real Rap Show, The Murder of Anna Matias. Give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to follow The Real Rap Show on Instagram at It's The Real Rap Show. Now y'all stay safe out there. Keep your kids safe. Real rap.